In this video, we're gonna be testing something called Google Wi-Fi. Is this something you maybe want to game on? I'm gonna be honest here, I'm doubtful guys, but we're gonna give this a try. Yeah, let's get into it. So hey, how is it going guys? It's Robin here on RB and Hardware. On this channel, you'll find PC hardware as well as gaming peripherals. And so if you're new, consider subscribing and don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos today. Yeah, we're gonna talk ping, milliseconds and Google Wi-Fi, which is mesh-based router under $100. And you know what? I love watching live streams all the time. Let me know if you do as well. Now, after been watching one of Summit 1G's Sea of Thief live streams the other day he was complaining over his poor wi-fi and high ping a lot of viewers were actually recommending google wi-fi as one of the best solutions and so that spawned the idea i figured why not give this one a try and test this out for you guys having in mind that this is google this probably means that i'm giving up my last bits and pieces of my personal life here but i mean hashtag yolo I don't know. At any point during the video, feel free to check out the links down below in case you want to check it out on Amazon. Now, Google is selling two solutions here. One with just one puck, or you can also get the triple package with three pucks as well. Now, one unit is whoever considered enough for a medium-sized apartment. And yeah, I'm testing the $99 package with one single puck. So Google Wi-Fi comes in a pretty small white squared box. And right after unboxing it, my first initial thoughts were, number one, it's a very small, sleek and modern looking device that comes in white only and because of that, I'm starting to realize one of the many reasons why this is so popular. Pretty much everyone wants white these days and the fact that it's small and modern looking as well. I can understand why so many people don't feel the need to actually hide this way especially woman right i mean think about it could it be the best looking router ever probably yes if you ask a woman at least taking a look at it there's not a whole lot going on here in terms of lightning and such there is this beaming white light that is indicating that the device is on and that it's working and it can easily be turned off if you want to but it's not that distracting in my opinion now flipping the puck around tells us that google wi-fi has two ethernet ports in total and you need to use one of these to connect it to your existing system so essentially you sacrifice the support on your modem or your router here depending on what your current solution looks like the device is as you can see very simplistic the setup and installation process is so simple i feel like the setup tutorial in the app misses a few important steps here but more on that in a second let's talk about the installation so basically all you need to do is to head over to the app store and download the google wi-fi app make sure that your google device is hooked up to your network as well you will notice that the device will be beaming in a bluish fashion way simply fire up the app and you will get asked to scan the qr code underneath the device and after that the installation is pretty straightforward set the name for your network set a password and yeah you're good to go the whole process from plugging in the cord to being 100 fully up and running only took about five or six minutes in total so if you want simplicity google won't be wasting your time here yes tech savvy i kind of found this process to be a tad bit basic but at the same time i'm kind of digging the simplicity as well so it's a mixed bag here as you can hear anyway what hardware are google using here so google has equipped every google wi-fi unit with a quad core qualcomm atheros chipset which is an rm cortex processor we got 512 megabytes of ram and 4 gigabytes of emmc flash base memory furthermore there is also the bluetooth 4.2 wireless technology it supports the latest 802.11 ac standard and it has a max theoretical speed of 1200 megabit and it's a dual band wi-fi routers so it's not triple band it's something to have in mind in terms of security it uses the vpa and the vpa 2 p 
PSK securing protocols. Once up and running, my new made Wi-Fi network instantly spawned up in every computer and smart device in my 60 square meter or about 650 square feet flat. So let's talk about the app for a second. The app itself is very basic again, but it covers all the initial stuff such as network priority, port forwarding, guest network and parent control etc. But there's no options to set up a VPN, separate your 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz networks or set specific channels here. Everything is automatic and as horrible as it sounds, it actually works pretty good but at the same time this is this device biggest Achilles heel in my opinion. There is basic integration with smart hubs so if you have Philips Hue lights for example you can control the lights from the Google app rather than the Hue app and having everything in one place is nice. You can see the stats for each device on the network and rename those that aren't labeled correctly. With these stats you can see how much each device is downloading per 5 second hour or day and even month. This is a great way to see who is consuming resources if you live with multiple people for example. Also you might catch a device downloading things in the background that are slowing down your network. You can prioritize group and even pause devices. Now let's talk about the important one, the performance. So the first testing phase is gonna be me testing the network speed on my OnePlus 3 device in speed test on three different distances. First up is gonna be right next to the router, then on a distance of eight meters with a closed door, and lastly from my kitchen, which is about 18 meters away. Right next to the router, I was getting full speed, which is about 250 megabits. On eight meters with the closed door, things looked a bit less exciting. And lastly from the kitchen, about the same speeds here. Why this drop in speed you may ask? We gotta touch on this a bit later. Regardless of these results, I was able to stream Plex and Netflix on these distances without any annoying buffering happening. So the problem that I'm seeing here is that since Google is serving you with what it thinks is the best signal and frequency, the actual bandwidth and download speed I was getting from speed test was varying a lot depending on my distance from the device. I've done quite a lot of testing here and sometimes I was seeing 200 megabits download and other times it was down to 50 to 60 for a few seconds. This indicates that the 18 meters from the device with a few walls in between and other wireless networks distracting in the surrounding seems to be the bare threshold for what's possible using just one device in my situation. But yeah, more on that in a second. Now with all these tests in mind, time to test gaming performance. Again, we will be splitting up the testing in three parts here or phases. First part I'm going to test with a wire in both CSGO and Fortnite to figure out what the base ping looks like. So what you need to know is that ping is a measurement number in milliseconds that tells you the time it takes for your game and your game server to communicate back and forth and you want this number to be as low as possible. Now since I'm currently living in Sweden which is based on the tippity top of Europe and many game servers are based in central Europe in countries such as France and Germany. In best case scenarios we Swedes typically get around 15 to 25 ms on game servers based in these countries. Now running CSGO and Fortnite with a cable shows us that these numbers seems to land in between 15 to 20 ms with Fortnite running a bit higher here as you can see. Now let's see what happens when we jump over to the Google Wi-Fi on a distance of about 2 meters from the unit. It seems like the ping is now slightly higher higher with an increase of about 10 milliseconds. Now you would think that this number would be almost the same since we're only 2 meters away right? But it could be the distraction from the great number of other surrounding wireless networks in my neighborhood that is causing some distraction here, who knows? Now in the last test I was sitting in my kitchen about 18 meters from the router and in game the ping in Fortnite seems to be around 40 to 50 ms which is about 10 ms higher than gaming with the cord. Side note here guys, the small occasional spikes in ping you're seeing here is 
caused by my old gaming laptop who is struggling to keep up with the frame rate. I'm jumping over to CSGO. I'm getting around 25 to 35 MS here in a random deathmatch matchmaking playlist. I did try different servers as well, should be said, with the same numbers. So in contrast to gaming with the cord, which was 20 to 25 MS, we're getting about 5 more milliseconds here on Google Wi-Fi of a distance of about 18 meters with a few walls in between. Again, I do live in a bigger city where there are many wireless to compete with here, which could be a part of the reason for the results that we're seeing here. Google Wi-Fi does support M-U-M-I-M-O. This is a feature that ensures that multiple clients are served at the same time so that they won't have to compete for the bandwidth and it also supports something called priority as well where you can tell the device under a time frame to prioritize a client. It kind of works like QoS. And I did try this in CSGO to try and conclude this guys, if you're looking for a cheap and budget friendly Wi-Fi solution and you're living in a fairly small home, not bigger than 60 to 80 square meters or 861 square feet, a single Google Wi-Fi unit could definitely be your answer here. If you got a bigger home, getting the 3 pack is a better idea. This is one of the cheapest Wi-Fi mesh solutions available. There are a few things you need to be aware of however many so-called mesh operating routers has at least triple band and the configurations are very very limited here and on top of that there is no web-based interface either only the app and the biggest drawback and frustration are that you cannot configure or set up the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz frequency separately and so in cases even though i'm in reach of the 5 gigahertz frequency who offers offers faster download speed, oftentimes Google essentially gives me the 2.4 GHz much slower bandwidth frequency which essentially leads to slower bandwidth speeds unfortunately this never impacted the ping for me whoever now that being said if you don't want to be bothered with the complexity with wireless networks and all the shenanigans that comes with it you're going to appreciate the minimalistic approach of the google wi-fi's interface and the fact that users doesn't have to acquire special networking knowledge in order to properly configure a fully functional wi-fi mesh system now i want to know guys your thoughts in the comments below mesh network or not let me know in the comments now also i want to know what ping are you usually getting in fortnite and csgo share your stats down below now i'm gonna be back with a brand new video tomorrow guys until then have an awesome day right bye